So is there an equivalence between um, a bardd and a shaman? In some senses, yes. But the way I often try and um, point out the differences is you wouldn't call a drummer a violinist, yeah? They're both musicians. They both deal with the same material, but they do it in very, very different ways, okay? One has a particular skill and craft which can be taken to the extremes of excellence just as the other does okay now this is a complex issue for several reasons the main problem is the term shamanism itself um now i know that you know shamanism is a very popular term it's been adopted across the world uh, and it's part of the fabric of our modern culture so why not use it and i do use it uh, at times absolutely uh, it's right to do so it's a it's a useful concept to have but what tends to happen uh, and this is a feature of um, uh, academic western culture mainly Anglo-American, but it also happens in the other European traditions also, uh, where you have the, the notion of objective truth in academia. Academia creates the sense of an objective historical reality that is repeatable, yeah? Though we can refer to these terms and concepts and they are stable and we can use them time and time again. Now, what often happens is we will use a concept to define a thing that we're trying to understand. But what actually happens is that the concept gets in the way of us understanding the nuance in the thing that we're trying to understand, just like this whole notion of a Celtic otherworld. Yeah? Otherworld is a term borrowed from other traditions to try and approximate what the Celts were up to. But when we look in detail at what the Celts were up to, there's no sense of it being an other world by any sense of the imagination. So the concept has come to obscure the actual re cultural reality. As first language Welsh speaker, I'm often frustrated with people's inability to try and go beyond these learned concepts to try and find the nuance, okay? Bards are not shamans. Shamans are not bards, but bards and shamans are priests. They are both part of the same general human tradition of a priest class, absolutely. And, you know, if you look at um, how modern Siberian shamans describe themselves, it's often in terms of a priest class, yeah? It's often in terms of that type of role. Absolutely, the Welsh bards have that in common with them. Traditional shamanism now, when we look at traditional shamanism, um, particularly uh, in uh, Northern Asia, what we find is they are most often the people who try and bridge the the divide between uh, the mortal realm and the spirit and the spiritual realm absolutely that's also what the welsh bards were doing totally there's another similar similarity but that's really appropriate to the description as a priest class that's essentially what a priest does any priest in any tradition claims connection to a supernatural condition or realm which they then mediate for everybody else okay where the welsh bards are different to shamans is basically they come from different traditions that are otherwise unrelated shamanism in its traditional form is often associated with different forms of trance yeah um uh trance like uh practices or practices that bring about a, a trance-like quality uh, drumming of course is the more familiar version of that technique that most of us know of uh, following rhythm the drum being the shaman's horse etc etc 
that's the mode by which the shaman goes into uh, the other world to talk to the spirits. Yeah, that doesn't happen in the Welsh tradition. That's not what's happening. Okay, it's a different process. It's a different technique. It's a different practice. As far as we can glean, um, and there's no um, way of knowing that this concept was stable throughout the whole history of the Welsh Bardic tradition, but it was certainly stable for long periods of it. Uh, and we're talking about uh, the elite bards now, the high-ranking court bards. Their practice was to use language, the spoken word, and the performance of the spoken word to engage with an ancestral voice. Now, there were um, uh, soothsayers in medieval Wales that would go into trance. Um, uh, there's that famous um, description by uh, Geraldus Cambrensis of Welsh soothsayers going into a trance and babbling gibberish and blah, blah, blah. And that may well have been an aspect of Welsh folk culture, but specifically the bards that we're talking about here, there's no mention of that. The closest we have is this mention of fiery, explosive, passionate performance. But it's ceremonial performance, formal performance of intricate and sophisticated poetry. Cerf Davod, Cynghaned, yeah? And that's not the same as a shaman journeying to the other world to talk to spirits. It's a different practice, yeah? And the more we try and fit Welsh bards into the shape of shamans, the more we obscure that reality. I see it all the time. I have lots of people coming on my courses and there is often this, this deep desire to justify the connection between Welsh bards and shamans. And I think that says a lot more about modern paganism than it does about the actual tradition of the Welsh bards. But this leads me on to another matter and this all stems back to Yolo Morganog. Yolo Morganog presented such a powerful reconstructed mythology. It was, it was so an intense a vision that it not only affected the Welsh nation, but it, it affected the English nation also. Uh, and, you know, the, the influence historically on English culture has waned, but it's still there, you know. Uh, you wouldn't have organizations such as OBOD or the BDO or the American organizations if you didn't have Yolo Morganog. Yeah, he gave birth to that mythology, that really potent dream. Uh, that's why we have these organizations today. That's why we have modern Druidry. It's all down to that really intense, powerful inspiration that Yolo Morganog had as a practicing Welsh bard, by the way. Yeah. So... What that's resulted in is two separate strands of Yolo's mythology. We've got the Welsh bardic tradition, which is ancient and goes all the way back to whenever. There's a video on that that you can watch, which is redreamed and reconstituted and reconstructed by Yolo Morganug, and he gives the the druidic ceremony associated with the welsh bardic tradition in the modern period and then you've got english druidry doing something very different developing its own practices um, exploring its own mythology creating a durable viable valid tradition in its own right i don't question that but what's happened is is that we think that we can take the concepts of one and understand the other by them the English tradition is separate and distinct from the Welsh tradition by today. They're different things. I'm not saying one is better than the other. They both serve their purposes. Yeah, They're both intense mythologies that do important things for the people involved in them, undoubtedly. But they are separate. They're different. They've evolved along different lines. One has an accompanying ancient bardic tradition, which feeds into that mythology in, in, in an explicit way and is a centerpiece of the Welsh tradition. Uh, national identity in Welsh culture in the modern period. In England, not so much. It's a subculture, yeah? it's a very popular subculture, but it doesn't um, command the same attention uh, uh, within the confines of English or Anglo-American culture 
uh, as Druidry and Bardism does in Welsh culture. Modern Druidry is um, uh, a subculture within the broader set of pagan uh, cultures uh, and paganism, modern paganism is uh, like any cultural tradition permeable and receives influences and gives influences and one of the influences that's come into modern paganism is shamanism mainly through the the white gaze of western academia unfortunately perhaps of course by today that's changing people are actually going and talking to actual shamans and bringing the lessons and the teachings back with them many of my friends have done this i appreciate that relationship and i know it's valid and it works so don't dispute it but the influence of shamanism on the modern pagan community and through into the uh, uh, modern druidry has kind of led some people to assume that 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 um complex of concepts can be translated into the welsh tradition and i'm afraid it it doesn't always add up it just doesn't work yeah they're they're two distinct things when you look at welsh poetry as a, a musical expression you find that it's um it contains these very complex sound effects uh, and it is rhythmic and it was uh, often performed to the beating of the staff so that's the poetry in performance mode where uh, there is um, a sense of evoking the ancestors in the moment of performance kind of in the dramatic persona that the bard is taking on but more than that that skill is developed through learning uh, chunks of ancient verse the bards operated in bardic schools they would probably organize themselves around the work of a particular ancient master or set of masters so for example there would be a taliesin school and an anaerin school maybe sometimes those lineages would mix the body of verse that's handed down from generation to generation accumulates an ancestral power obviously but again it's all in the words yeah it's in the spoken word when you recite the poetry of the ancient master you bring him into the present moment yeah a very different technique to what shamanism appears to be as far as we understand it we should be humble acknowledge that we are not members of that culture and therefore we need to put some work into understanding that culture before we can speak on its behalf yeah 